I just spilled everywhere. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I love how you have a, tile, a towel ready. <laughs> Do you know how many times this is? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Red Rum and Red Wine podcast. The, oh, God, I'm just so out of it. (laughs) I said podcasts. Podcast. The podcast where we talk about murder, mystery, and mishaps. Clearly, this is one of them. Hi, I'm Kristen. Howdy ho, Sarah here. Howdy ho, and a Christmas poo. Nope. (laughs) It's what? Monday. It's Monday. It feels so... Oh, God, I don't even know. I'll, I'll get there eventually. I'll get there. You know, it's it's been a long week. The first day of it. It's always the longest. <laughs> yeah. And... Long week. Oh, my God. I don't think that there's enough White Claw in the world to revive me from this mood this case has put me in, but I'll definitely try. Speaking of which, I'm drinking a White Claw. What are What are we drinking on your side today? Uh, lime cucumber Gatorade. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a weekend full of drinking festivities for a wedding and... Oh, how nice. Uh, yeah, and so today, for the next few days, probably, I'm uh, <laughs> water and Gatorading it up, because... <laughs> how healthy of you. Yeah. I, I you know, I didn't drink, I could have drank way more, but with the traveling, I just feel, you know, kind of drained. Yeah. And I feel like I need, I, like, a detox, so. It's <laughs> probably best, you know, it, I heard someone once told me that it was healthy to take a few days in between drinking. I'll, <laughs> I'll let you know when I try it, though, but, yeah. ugh, no, I, I got the White Claw, man. It's, um, I've been saying it all week. I'll say it again. This is, this is probably like the hardest case i've done Ooh, not gonna lie major majorly fucked made like um i'm gonna try my best not to cry and if i do don't come for me i'm fucking sensitive (laughs) Um, but it's just uh it was just a hard story to take in it was hard to research it did take me some time like every time i would read a little bit i just had to set it down and yeah, it just took a little bit to get through. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to think if I need to say anything else before we jump in, but no, I don't think we do. So, <clears throat> yeah, let's just like get right on in and talk about the fuck up in this that is this case, because today I'm going to be talking about the cover up that was involved in the death of Lavina Lynn Johnson. Oh. So, Lavina Lynn Johnson was actually in the army and deployed in Iraq at the time of her death. And in documents given to her family, her death was ruled as a suicide. But after looking at the details involved in this case and the documents that were given, it really seems like it was anything but. Oh, my gosh. Before we get into the case, I just want to throw some facts out in there. So... Women serving in the U.S. military are more likely to be raped by a fellow soldier than killed by enemy fire. There were over 120 female deaths in Iraq around the time of this case. And when you look at the statistics into those deaths, over around 50% of the women that died were in non-combat related incidences. Oh, And of that 50%, 25 of those were done under suspicious circumstances that usually ended with the military saying that they committed suicide. So there is a website, Protect Our Defenders, that I really recommend that everyone go to, especially if you or someone that you know is in a similar situation to this, male or female. Um, It provides great resources for victims as well as gives a platform for victims and others to share their story. Fun fact, um, Mm -hmm. a few semesters ago I helped put on a workshop about military sexual trauma Um, and we had 
uh, survivors speak and you know it's really cool yeah and it's kind of unfortunate that how how many of them there are yeah and you know another fun fact is men are just as likely to experience military sexual trauma Mm -hmm. they're just less likely to report to report it yeah and it's to say like even women are so unlikely to report it just oh yeah and i'll go into like the why and whatnot later on but it's just when you go to the website you see especially i mean it's not just women but both men on here and it it, the numbers are just kind of astounding when you get into it but i did want to speak of two of the stories that were shared on this platform just so you can get a better understanding of the environment that i'm talking about and so you can kind of also see that this isn't really a one-off scenario. It's very, I hate to use the word common, but it happens quite regularly, unfortunately. Uh, so on the Pro- Protect Our Defenders website, they talk uh, about a st- woman's story by the name of Penayota. I'm so sorry, I'm probably mispronouncing that. But in her story, she tells how she was raped by a fellow Coast Guardsman. And when she went to go tell her commander of her experience, she was basically called a liar and told that the two needed to essentially work out their differences. And when she decided that that wasn't enough and that she wanted to keep fighting for her justice, she was forcibly discharged for speaking up. Yep. As a big fuck you to everyone, she decided to find found the Military Rape Crisis Center and there she's using her platform to help others. So big shout nice. out to her yes there is also a man by the name of heath who shares his story now he speaks of how he was continually sexually assaulted sodomized by his shipmates in the navy uh, when he would go to his commanders they would again refuse to do anything about it and in fact his attackers would find out and only escalate their attacks on him So from there, Heath decided to go AWOL because he had no other option. In fact, he went AWOL twice. Uh, When the military found him, they offered an honorable discharge and just put an end basically to everything. So there are many, many, many more stories like that on the Protect Our Defenders website. Uh, So go check it out for the stories, the resources. And um, yeah, there is also... A documentary that was made in 2010 called The Silent Truth about this case. I highly recommend it. They did an excellent job. It comes from the father John's telling of the story as well as uh, the mother Linda. And it is very graphic though. I want to warn they do show images of Lavina deceased and like her the crime scene photos and whatnot. And then a big trigger warning to this case as well. Sorry, I should have put it a little bit sooner, but this case does involve a lot of instances of sexual assault and whatnot, so. Hmm. I haven't even barely touched the surface, and I'm, like, already it's, stressing. It's, um, yeah, it's hard. It's, I just, like, I was joking to Sarah earlier, like, I think I've, I low-key found, like, my lifelong passion that I would advocate for because like hearing this just knowing that these are people that are willingly signing up to protect our country and this is what we're doing to them it's it was horrifying to read about yeah truly so a little bit about Lavina on January 27th of 1985 a very special little girl by the name of Lavina Lynn Johnson was born to Dr. John Johnson and wife Linda Johnson Mm. She was the fourth born out of five, but she was the first girl to bless the Johnson family. And the fifth one would be a girl as well. Okay. She was extremely well educated and would graduate from Hazelwood Junior High School and her high school as well with honors. And would be involved in a number of school activities. So she would get a certificate from the DARE Achievement Award program. She was in the student volunteer group and got an award from them. She was also a member of the Student Citizenship Club and even earned her certificate of recognition from Congressman uh, Lacey Clay. Hmm. She was also a member of the Vegetarian Economy and Green Agriculture, or VEGA, which advocated 
for alternate means of meat other than farm animals because other than her love for her family, she had a super strong love and passion for animals. Wow. And even at the age of 11, she became a paying member of the People for Ethical Treatment of Animals, or PETA. Wow. Yeah. Like, more than I did when I was 21, so. (laughs) (laughs) It was often said of Lavina, you look like your daddy, you act like your daddy, you think like your daddy. Hmm. So it wasn't that shocking when Lavina decided that she was going to join the army just like her father had and become a part of something much bigger than herself. So her dad, John, had actually served as an ex-GI and him and his wife had actually both worked in the Department of Army or something or other. They had like civilian desk jobs working Mm -hmm. for the army. So even after serving his time, he was still very involved with it. Now, even though his Lavina's father was in the army him and Linda didn't want her to join the army in fact they had both worked really hard to ensure that they would have enough money for all five of their kids to go to college and not really have to worry about taking out any loans or being worried about how am I going to pay for this like they just didn't want them to have to worry about that kind of thing yeah so it came to It came as kind of a shock when Lavina approached her father and basically said, hey, how would you feel about me joining the army? And (laughs) the parents were like, no, you already know how we feel. And she's like, well, what if I'm telling you I'm not asking you? And he was like, oh, okay, so... I guess there's nothing we can really do about it because as the dad said, it was that Carter woman ambition uh, because that was the mom's maiden name. Like once they got that thought into their head, there was nothing that they could do. Like she was set in her ways and she was going to join the army whether they wanted to or not. Like she had already talked to recruiters at school. They had got her set up like she was doing it. Now it was the recruiters that John Johnson would actually blame for the whole thing, um, basically saying that they fester in the high school hallways and basically just lure easily impressionable children when they don't have a parent guardian present to tell them, hey, this is maybe something you need to think about. You're only telling them the positive. You're not telling them the true events of what actually happens once you're done signing your name on that recruitment letter all they tell you is that you get benefits and that you can you know do something good for your country yeah and like I, I know that this is coming off a little harsh and like I'm not trying to offend anyone in the military or anything like that or like if you recruit for the military like that I'm not trying to offend in any way but you really have to be honest with the sense of are you really telling these kid, these children, because that's what they are, they're barely 18, the truth about what they're joining into, like, are you telling the women, hey, one in three women will get raped in the training or military camps, that if you do get raped, even as a male or a female, your higher ups will ignore the sexual abuse and call you liars or even discharge you if you try to push further oh, we're, we're not saying this in the recruitment notes, no? Oh, probably because not many people would want to join if that was the truth of what was going, like, if that's what they knew when they were walking into these camps. Right. So, Lavina wouldn't get these warnings, and she would decide to leave for training camp and eventually join the 129th Corp Support Battalion that would go into I- Ballad, Iraq. Once Lavina joined the army and the training camps, of course, like you're not allowed, I say of course, like I know, I don't really know, but you can't use the phone all the time or like it's only a certain time. So she would obviously write a lot of letters to her family and whatnot. So a lot of these letters were featured in the documentary. Um, So she would 
speak a lot about like the rude welcome, of course, that is brought on to any military camp as soon as you walk in, how like they would make them do these push ups and make them hold them and they'd be cursing at them. And she'd say how a lot of girls around her were already breaking down crying. But like mm-hmm. she was like, no, I'm not going to be one of those girls. Like I prepared myself for the hardships that were to come. And she's like, don't worry about me. Like I'm going to get through this just fine. Mm-hmm. In one of her letters, she had actually said something that I wanted to put in because I think it kind of speaks the truth to what it could be like um, being recruited as a female soldier. Just kind of the sudden shift that it can take. So in Lavina's words, she said that the first thing that they were called when they were walking into camps was female warriors. And then they suddenly just started calling them females. And now they're mainly just called soul because they were only seen as half soldiers. <gasps> what the fuck? Like, I don't know why reading that <laughs> really. Maybe it's because I'm a woman. I, maybe it's I mean, because it's like my so period's coming things. in a week. It's, it's petty. It's. What the fuck immature, do you even it's mean? mean. It, it, it. I'm soul are you it's not even like that's such a like when I think of soul I think of such like a heart warming and now yeah. all I think of is this and it's like I hate this story for making me think of it's soul in such a negative fuck, okay? like I'm just like excuse me I, I want to smack the shit out of you yeah Ugh. she would also write to her family asking for soap because they wouldn't give her any I thought that that was an interesting thing. So if you are ever donating to soldiers, please send them soap because apparently they don't get that luxury. And she would find lighthearted moments in her letters. She would joke about how she hoped her sister Lakeisha would learn to load the dishwasher properly so she didn't flood the kitchen like she did last time. And she would even talk about how during her time in Iraq, she had picked up the game Spades. Oh. And would like uh, the scenery there. She would see like uh, camels and she'd be like, oh, my gosh, I didn't even I didn't know this either. Apparently, ca- camels come in different colors. I thought they were just brown. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think she I knew there were like white and brown ones. And oh, I, I guess maybe I've seen, I've seen a white ones. one. I've never seen a black one. But yeah, she like saw saw that or she would say how they would see a scorpion and everyone would be like oh my god picture insta uh, <laughs> <laughs> so she would just talk about how there were like of course lighthearted moments like that um and again she would tell her parents like don't worry about me i'm doing great everything's great on sunday july 17th at 7 30 a.m they would get a phone call from her and the father john would pick it up because he was typically the first one up in the house he had grabbed the mom, Linda, and they had talked for a few minutes and she had been saying how, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I just found out I may be coming home sooner than expected, that I'll probably be home in time for Christmas. So her whole thing growing up was to be in charge of decorating the Christmas tree like she liked it a certain way. And she would have the family be like, put this here, help me here. And there, there, there. And so she would tell them like, hey, do not decorate that Christmas tree without me. Wait for me to get home and we're going to all decorate it together. Oh my God. Yeah. Just talking and like being super excited and super happy. And the mom, Linda would even go, Oh my gosh, we're so excited to hear this. Why don't I wake everyone up? You know, everyone's still asleep, but they would love to hear from you. Let me wake everyone up, get a chance to say hi to everyone. And Lavina would go, Oh mom, no, don't worry about it. It's, It's so early, you know, they hate waking up early don't worry about it she said i can't call back tomorrow on the 17th but i'll call you back as soon as i can so it's fine i'll talk to them when i call back i see some like dark (laughs) foreshadowing maybe the family would hang up not knowing that this would be the last call that they would get from her (laughs) sorry I'm yeah. really going to try. I'm I'm really going to try not to cry. In the documentary, like the mom talks about the regret that she has for like not waking everyone up to talk to her. Yeah. So they could at least have said goodbye to her one last time. Oh my god. Just a few days later, John Johnson would describe how his wife Linda Johnson 
would turn to him in the hallway and say, John, there's a soldier at the door. Now, John, with his military experience and having not heard from his daughter, automatically, just like automatically knew that something horrible had happened and that they were there because of Lavina. Oh, no, I'm not ready. The soldier would walk in and say, are you the father? Are you the mother of Lavina Lynn Johnson? And when they would say yes, he would coldly stand there and say, I regretfully come to inform you that your daughter, Private Lavina Lynn Johnson, is dead. As the parents' world is crumpling literally beneath their feet and they're just wondering how this could have happened, somewhere in the air of this whole event, John hears self-inflicted. Oh, fuck. And he goes, what? What do you mean, self-inflicted? Are you saying that she did this to herself? As soon as they began to push, the soldier would immediately go defensive and say, it's being investigated. I don't, I can't tell you anymore. I don't know. Oh God, okay. When they would go later on to get the body from the airport, Linda would say that the last time she was at this airport, Lavina was running into her mom's arms going, oh mom, I'm so happy. I'm so excited to see you. And now she's picking her daughter up in a box with a flag draped over her. Yeah. Oh, my God. Linda needed two people. John and John in the documentary was like, now I'm pretty strong. And like, I couldn't get her off this box. I needed help from the sister. So it took two people to pry Linda off that box. Oh, my God. It had been just eight days before her 20th birthday. (gasps) Holy shit, she was only 19? She was only 19 when this happened. Oh, no. She was also the first female soldier in Missouri to die in Iraq. (gasps) Now, the next day, when they were making preparations for the funeral, the casualty liaison, who is essentially the person that prepares everything, it's like a... Like a funeral coordinator, essentially. Hmm. He would approach the father, John, and say, hey, I think you actually need to consider having a closed casket because from what I understand, it it's not pretty. What the fuck? John says, fuck you. Keep it open. And they there is a photo in the documentary that shows Lavina in her casket and though they put makeup over her you can clearly tell that her face is swollen from like what can only be bruising like major bruising that could have happened to her face before it was so bad that when family members would look at the funeral they would become so upset her little sister Lakeisha would yell at the two soldiers that were there and she would scream at them what did you do what did y'all do to my sister what happened to her now the medical examiner who was supposed to be in charge or who was in charge of the autopsy was supposed to tell john right away when he was done with the autopsy and show him the findings and what all he thought happened john would get the autopsy information on august the 3rd of 2005 but guess when the autopsy was actually done oh no july 22nd (gasps) of 2005 what the actual red flag number one yeah so the medical examiner his name's edward a reedy sack of shit he calls john and he says hi i did the autopsy what questions do you have john goes did you perform a rape test on my daughter you said that she died under distress under duress Did you check out what kind of distress that could have been? What could have possibly made her suicidal? No, the examiner says. I didn't look for it. There Uh, there wasn't a sign of struggle. Red flag number two. Red flag number two. John would press a little further. Okay. I just got done staring at my daughter's body. The gunshot wound is on the left side of her temple. 
She's right-handed. How do you explain that? It's just an exit wound, the medical, the medical examiner would say. She simply stuck an M16 rifle in her mouth and shot herself. Well, we're going to completely disregard the fact that she's 5'1". I'm sorry, I didn't convert it. 5 foot 1 inch. And that this is a 40 inch long weapon. Yeah. When you said M16, I was like, oh. It's a big, it's a big, yeah. So we're going to disregard that she's a tiny human being using a huge ass weapon. There's a photo of her next to one. She's crouching down and it's bigger than her. So yeah, it's a big weapon. Like that seems kind of odd that she would, like how would she be able to do that? But we'll, we'll just push that back for now. Well, it's a huge weapon. Shouldn't there be a lot more damage to the back of her head? Yeah, I was going to say. The wounds that I'm seeing aren't actually, like, matching what you're saying was done to her. Right. Well, then the examiner switches, literally switches his story and says, oh, no, 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 it's considerable damage. In fact, it's the whole back of her head that was where the bullet hole was. And John goes, no, I looked at my daughter's body. It was on her left side. I'm not crazy. I I think I would remember what she looks like. My last fucking vision of her. Yeah. The examiner would simply say, well, depends on how you look at it. (gasps) Ew. (sighs) So around the 16th of August, the liaison would come back with him on the same day and say... The evidence of this case is essentially so messed up that it would take, like, over a year for us to, like, figure out what happened and for us to tell you what exactly went down. And I love John for this. John goes, do you know I worked for the Department of the Army for 25 years? Do you know I was an ex-GI? And the medical examiner kind of taken aback is like, or the liaison, he's kind of like, no, uh, no, I didn't. And John goes, well, I am. And I know these people very well. And once y'all make a call, you do not have the integrity to change it and do the right thing. And unfortunately, he's fucking exactly right. Because on the 19th of September, the liaison basically sends him a copy of Reedy's autopsy where it says this is a suicide. It's deemed officially a suicide. Mm -hmm. And this is on the same day where someone working for, like, the criminal investigation for the military came to the family and went specifically to Linda, the mom, and was like, we will do everything in our power to make sure that we find out what happens. And that day, John got the official autopsy report saying it was a fucking suicide. Fuck these people. I really, I just, like, I, I, if you're involved in this case in any way that, like is for the military fuck you and like you deserve the deepest pit of hell because how could you let like and you do this for multiple people as we will fucking see later on this isn't a (laughs) one-off it's not a one-off incident and the names that i say later on are pretty fucking like it's just how this all ties and how it all becomes one thing it's i'm sorry i didn't write this down but i just have to say it's fucking shocking how some of the places and the people that come up are fucking how this thing is whole linked it's all one big circle and it's all connected it is so fucking disgusting i can't i can't i can't with this case i can't so obviously taking this hit it's like a major blow to the family they are at a total loss like what the fuck do they do they know that something happened like there's no way that their daughter who just said i will be home for christmas keep don't decorate the tree someone who is about to commit suicide does not say wait to decorate the christmas tree don't don't wake the family up i don't want to say goodbye to my brothers and sisters because i know this is the last time i'm going to be talking to them like that's not what someone who is suicidal does The family decides, no, this is wrong. We need to fight. So fight they do. Now, John is able to obtain these Xeroxed photos from the army that basically show like his the crime scene. So obviously looking at these images, even though they were Xeroxed black and white, like really hard to see the detail, just like looking at what he could see, he knew like something is wrong. This doesn't 
It doesn't look right. It doesn't look like a suicide. Right. I'm surprised he was able to even get those photos. So how John was actually able to get those Xeroxed copies is actually through a Freedom of Information Act, otherwise known as the FOIA. So this is basically a law that requires full or partial disclosure of previously unreleased information and documents controlled by the United States government upon request. Ah. This is... I'm trying to think. So, you know, I want to I want to say a dumbed down version of it, but let's be honest, I don't think I'm smart enough to give you the audience one. So it's basically like if the family wants to know stuff about their loved one and they happen to be a soldier or something, it's like a government document and they want access to it, they can put in a request for this and get it. But just because the Freedom of Information Act is a thing doesn't mean that the families are like guaranteed that information like i'm sorry military but the military's a little fucking bitch mm-hmm. and they <laughs> the fbi is just gonna come raiding my yeah. house now <laughs> but but they don't they don't yeah. they don't do anything they hide it they do everything that they can if a family puts in and a request to get this information what's this family going to do compared to the military nothing so fuck you we're not going to we're not going to abide by this request so you'll see it either takes a long time for these families to get this information or it takes like some congressman or someone in a higher position to step in and be like you're the big bad military and you need to stop being mean to these civilians and they'll go okay we're sorry and then they'll get the documents but it's like what what is oh fuck so that's like how he was able to obtain the images but yeah we'll see it oh my god it just it you'll just see how fucking difficult these people are i can't with them so john would look over all the xerox photos and the documents that he was allowed access to and he would see that the death was ruled as combat related and john was kind of confused over that because she was working in the telecommunications room okay so how could her death be combat related when it was literally like an office job yeah but I mean, he would I think, go oh sorry sorry no no, no i think because she was deployed in iraq like over there you're i think you're considered like always on combat duty yeah maybe because it can be like so many a bomb could drop like, and literally yeah yeah i don't know it just depends but he thought that that was like she didn't have a combat related position so he was like i think that that's a fucking yeah. weird why are you saying that he would further read how the army just stooped to the lowest of the fucking low and start to say oh no lavina was deranged what I just because you're a woman doesn't mean that you can say that every every fucking time a woman com- she's deranged she's depressed she's crazy like fuck she's you hysterical. Fuck, uh, fuck that excuse I'm so sick and tired of hearing that like fuck you and fuck the army for even going to this level fuck you she was deranged okay And when that wouldn't work out for their little plot, they would shift it and say, oh, no, she wasn't deranged. She was depressed. She hated her life and she wanted to die. How did they know this? There were apparently, like, phone calls being overheard by eyewitnesses saying that, like, she was depressed and she didn't want to live. And I'm like, oh, these phone calls that she was giving to her parents saying how excited she was to go home. And, like, decorate the Christmas tree with her family. Those, we're talking about those phone calls that, yeah, that gave off a real big depressive vibe to me. And the family, no, like, they were like, we had no idea. She seemed so fucking happy. She didn't, she even said, Mom, I will talk to my brothers and sisters later. Don't wake them up. That yeah. is not someone who is suicidal. I don't know how many times I'm going to have to point that out. John would play along he's like knows their games and he's like okay let me entertain this if you say she's depressed why are you letting her carry around a fucking m16 
Yeah. I'm just... I was going to point that out, too. Like, if she's deranged or depressed... Um, why? <laughs> usually people... <laughs> Like, you don't let them carry on their normal duties before right? getting either some help or, I don't know, or getting uh, assessed Treatment. further. Yeah. If... Something. Like, I, I, at the very least, just, like, don't give them a weapon. Let them do their duties. Yeah. Just, like, not. I, I'm, okay. We'll ignore that. So you give suicidal people guns. That's really great job on you, ARMY. I will leave that in my Yelp review. <laughs> she... He also wanted to know, what what did you think? What was your thought process that led to you thinking my daughter was depressed? Hmm. Hmm. Wait for this one. Wait, wait, wait. Hmm. <laughs> she changed her eating habits. She was eating ice cream three to four times a day. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you're aware how hot it gets in Iraq. Like, over 120 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm so Celsius, people. Hold on, I got you. 49 degrees Celsius, roughly. Okay. Celsius and Fahrenheit, the the conversion there doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Anywho. 49 degrees Celsius, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. It's fucking hot. And I bet ice cream out there is a luxury. I have no idea. She, I know in one of the notes, she had actually said how shocked she was that when she got to uh, where her base was, there was like a Burger King. Yeah. There was like a lot of American um, like fast food chains and yeah. whatnot. And how I guess they kind of do that as a way to get all the Americans to spend their money there. Mm-hmm. But because uh, she would say, oh, no, I'm not falling for that. I'll eat what I have here. But. Yeah, I think everyone on base would eat ice cream if it's hot. Yeah. But it's it's just like um, John would go on to say like, oh, because she's not drinking beer like the good boys, she's deemed as being depressed because she chose ice cream over beer. Yeah. That's what you're literally telling me is. <laughs> deranged. Yeah, deranged. She was labeled deranged, and we completely just glide over the fact that there is an actual official document by the company commander actually stating that this soldier was clearly happy and seemingly healthy, both physically and emotionally. And he wrote that report on July 19th of 2005. Well, good for him. Well, yeah, it's just the army covering it up, yeah. though, is just what it's showing. And it's just, I believe that that was the day that she was um, killed officially. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, like, on the day that she died, someone wrote that. I don't know if it was before or after her death. I believe they wrote that at 1045 in the morning. So, like, on the day of her death, they were saying she's clearly happy, whatnot. Oh, it's shit. really, like... <laughs> It's just them going back and, like, altering shit to make it fit their narrative after the fact of, whatever, her dying. It's just fucking ridiculous and upsetting. Clearly, John has been staring at all of these photos of his daughter, and he knew, like, eventually these photos would mean that he would get to her actual photos of her dead body, and when he... He had said how, like, when he had gotten to a certain photo of her laying down with her right arm over her head that he just couldn't take it anymore and just walked into the bathroom and just cried for the next hour. Even, like, going as far as begging, like, please just give me a heart attack so I can be done with this and just have it all be over. Oh, my. Now, he would say after that that, like, John didn't necessarily want to fight. But if everyone else was willing, that he would do it. That he would be the strong one for the family and fight for Lavina. So it was during that time that he would get the help of his pastor's wife and another woman from the church. And he would basically go to them and ask, I need to know if there are any other stories like Lavina's because I know that this can't be the only time that something like this has happened. So can you please help me and try and find other families who whose children have committed suicide quote unquote when they clearly did not and they would look for cases they would start to dig and they would start to find a pattern. Oh shit. 
Now, one of the cases that really stuck out to John was the case of Tina Priest. And John said that this case just really spoke to him in the sense that it was just like so eerily similar to Lavina's. Oh, gosh. Tina was also 19, just like his daughter. And she was also in Iraq. Now, while she was in Iraq, she would call her mom every day. And she had actually confessed to her mom during those phone calls that she had been repeatedly raped and sexually assaulted by her higher ups. She was currently getting medical treatment and counseling at the time. And though she was really angry and embarrassed, her mom said that in no way was she depressed about what happened to her. Right. But regardless, on March 1st of 2006, she would very similar similarly to Lavina get an M16 rifle, put it inside her mouth, and pull the trigger. Oh, wow. Clearly, after hearing this, and after talking to her daughter and knowing about her experience about what was going on in this camp she said there is no way that my daughter committed suicide i mean i know that she was going through rough things but there's no way that she would have done this and i didn't add this but it's very so among people in the military that commit suicide It is very, very rare that they commit suicide outside of the United States. Yeah. For whatever reason, it's just an odd thing. So on top of the oddity that it's done in Iraq, like you're saying that my daughter who's just telling me, who calls me every day basically to say that, like, there's, there's no way that she could have done this. John would find the mother, Joy Priest, and get together. And what John would find is that Joy would actually get a ballistics test done with her daughter. And what she found from the ballistics test was that her daughter, who was 5'2", <gasps> an inch higher than Lavina, could not have shot herself with an M16 rifle. It was physically impossible. Oh what God. Something we already knew. Yeah physically impossible so joy knowing this goes to the army and says hey this is impossible how do you explain that the army goes oh she used her big toe (gasps) so you're telling me that the one it's odd that she's doing this in iraq two who uses a fucking big toe i i i have i'm speechless at the big toe like you would you would have other weapons, right? I'm yes. assuming that you have access to uh, you filled like Lavina had said in the church service. Oh, this is the only place that you go to church, and it's just lined up with weapons. I'm assuming that one of them is a lot easier to commit suicide with than a fucking M16 rifle. Yes, I am flabbergasted. I'm shocked. Can the military police come up with a better excuse? Because it's they're not even trying. They're not even trying. I don't want to wish ill, um, yeah. but I'm wishing ill. I'm pissed. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Oh Many of these women, it turned out, were raped in Camp Tahi. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but it's a camp in Iraq. Tina was from there. Lavina was from there. And Hannah Gunner, or I believe Tina, or Lavina was from there. I'm sorry. I, I may be throwing that out there. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But for a fact, Hannah Gunnarsson was there. Now, Hannah Gunnarsson was found dead in the middle of a road, in the road, after appearing to have been run over. (gasps) She was found in the middle of the road. She was supposed to be in a tower guarding it. How did she end up in the middle of the road, you might ask? Well, one of her sergeants came by at night. And though it's pretty unclear... He says she voluntarily went with him. I know we know otherwise. She got drunk, he said. She was sitting in the Humvee next to me after we had sex. And we're driving back and I just look over and I don't see her anymore. What? But I hear a 
But I hear a thump. <gasps> but I look back and I don't see anything. So I just keep driving. Someone's driving with you. So you're in a moving vehicle and someone is sitting next to you. And then you hear a thump and they're not there. And the car hasn't stopped. Um, okay. I'm really, I'm, I'm really glad that this is who we have running our country, our military. So, you're not helping yourself here, bud. <laughs> I'm like, the were mili- you so drunk? You just didn't notice her hop out of a Humvee that she wasn't in to begin with, probably. Or that he fucking just pushed her out and probably fucking ran her over, oh, or yeah. probably killed her and then dumped her out. And it's just like the either way, your excuse of not noticing a a woman moving out of a moving Humvee is really flabbergasting and it's ridiculous what happens to him after this because so the guy obviously gets court-martialed because regardless it's like you were fucking driving after drinking you're drinking and driving and whether you knew it or not you ran over her right (laughs) I'm sorry you did like you put yourself there at least stupid ass excuse you want to say oh I was just drunk and I didn't know well you fucking did but whatever so (laughs) doesn't even matter because they find him not guilty of vehicular homicide or manslaughter Mm -mm. they don't find him guilty in fact they just slap him on the wrist with like an accidental something or other I can't be bothered to know because it doesn't fucking matter it's not justice He was fined a month's pay, boo fucking who, and he was not kicked out of the military. In fact, he's still in it, honey. He's still running the military, whatever department, whatever thing he's doing, he's still doing it. Great. Love to hear it. It took Hannah Gunnarsson's family nearly a year and a half to find all of this out. Holy crap. And they were using that Freedom of Information Act that I was talking about. Right. Using just that. It took them a year and a half. So, like, it, it's an act. Yeah, it's a piece of law. It's a shitty piece of law because it doesn't work. Because it takes this long. And even then, the families don't get any justice. It's just them reading about how fucked the military just fucked up their child. Yeah. And, uh. Wow. So, they actually have a term for this because it happens so much. It's called command rape. Because these commanders, these high people of authority, whatever, I'm sorry, I can't talk. I'm so fucking upset. They rape these lower authorities and say, oh, who's going to believe you? I've been in the army 20 years, 25 years. I have this title and this title. You just joined a week ago. They're not going to believe you. They're going to believe me. Right. And it's like, they're the people that you go to to report something like that. Exactly. (laughs) And it's like, obviously, the commanders know that their other people are doing it. So then they're just like, you're a liar. You're lying. I'm going to gaslight the fuck out of you because I know what's going on, but I don't give a shit. Right. And here's the fucking cherry on top. Because you see, you see, a lot of these trainees come from a certain base in Texas, <laughs> a base that we know as Fort Hood. Yep. It is one of the most violent bases, has the highest number of rapes reported, and that's just reported because you sure as hell know they're not yep. all reported. And as we are all fucking aware, it's the same base where in 2020 Vanessa Gein was let- later raped and killed. Yep. But are we going to do anything about this? Did we do anything about this? Because this happened in 2005 and in fucking... A law was just passed or they're putting into motion about how you can now report military sexual trauma outside of the military. Good. Yeah. Because of all of this. (laughs) It has the highest number of domestic violence incidences. And it's kind of on point that when they are deployed into Iraq and Afghanistan the camps where they are sent are said to have the highest number of violent acts committed against their own soldiers oh my. now most families won't investigate any of these 
because most of the families don't have the resources that the military has. Right. And it's a really, really daunting task to take on. You have to think that these are people who have to relive the trauma every single day of what happened to their loved one, who have to have their loved one's character dragged through the mud for the army or the military, whatever branch they're in to get their point across. I mean, it's just the horrors. I understand why families don't want to go through that. Right. Now, thankfully, there was an angel out there who was watching the Johnson struggle and thinking exactly what I'm thinking and decided to send a little Hail Mary their way. So in some of the documents that were sent to John was a Xeroxed photo of a CD. Now, it was just a photo of a CD, but the description of the CD was said that it in the CD, it contained all of the original photos of the crime scene. Oh. Now, at first, the Johnsons, like, didn't really know what to make of this. And they were kind of like, uh, I don't know if this is a thing or not. Why don't we ask about it? Well, when they asked about it, they started kind of getting a little push. And they were like, well, this is probably something. Let's get some help. So they turned to Congressman Representative Lacey Clay's office and basically make their way up to Clay and say, hey, we need you to help us get this CD. And we know that you, like, I, he is really into, like, a military reform group. I don't think I'm saying that right. But he, so he is, like, really big on helping military families that have been done wrong. There's a certain term that he does that he goes for that, but they just, like, really lucked out in finding him. So, Clay had actually had a congressional hearing about the Pat Tillman and Jessica Lynch case. And these are just two army cases. Really interesting to read about if you want to hop over and go read about it. But during that hearing, he basically said, hey, we know you have this CD. We have Lavina Johnson's family asking for it. Are you you're going to give it to us under this act? Because that's what you're supposed to do under this law. Now, on TV, the man, this man by the name of Brig General Rodney Johnson, fuck you, was on TV and just like, oh, yeah, no, of course, of course, we'll give you the thing. Like, just send us a form. I'm so sorry. Like, oh, fine, we'll send it. As soon as Clay's team went to try and get the CD, Rodney Johnson's team was like, no, fuck you. You're not uh, entitled to this. So Clay's team said, no, fuck you. (laughs) They went to this like other higher up in this other committee and basically got them to force the army to send them that CD with the original photos and whatnot. Now, the CD that contained all of the hundreds of these photos and documents and evidence surrounding Lavina Lynn Johnson's death is horrifying. It's fucking... It's astounding. I'm really not sure when the family had full access to it, but either way, like, the family knew from the beginning that something was off. Right. All of this confirms it. Oh. Because when John was thumbing through the documents, he would find that Lavina had actually, in fact, been raped prior to her death. She was even receiving medical treatment for an STD that she got from one of the attacks. Oh, my God. According to military records, Lavina Johnson had left her barracks, walked across the post, sat down in a dirty, dark contractor's tent, lit an accelerant, which was just like this uh, bottle of arsenal, I guess, set it under the bench that she was sitting down in, stuck an M16 in her mouth, and pulled the trigger. Now, her autopsy, what it really revealed was that she had a broken nose. She had a black eye. She had loose teeth. And she had corrosive chemical burns. 
on her genitals. <gasps> oh, my God. She also had a gunshot that, according to the medical examiner, seemed inconsistent with suicide. I could have told you. Yeah, that, surprise. <sighs> Someone poured lye in her vagina. <gasps> the theory of this being that it would destroy all DNA evidence. I don't know how this, how, how is this a suicide? I want to know. How can someone actually do this to themselves and then like shove a rifle in their mouth and kill themselves? Like I get that the pain alone of that is probably like a fucking terrible, you can't, I need a second. (sighs) They couldn't even find the bullet that killed her at the crime scene. So I really want to know how that equates to suicide, because how can a dead person do that? I just am really curious as to how. There were also bloody footprints found outside of her fucking tent. You fucking bastards. You fucking bastards. Hide it a bit better, actually. Try to hide it a bit better next time. I'm just, how fucking dare you? And you say it's a suicide. And Sarah, I sent you a photo. I am going to post it. It's just of a sketch, but it's basically essentially of the sketch of how her body was found. Now, you'll see she's they find her in like a dirty tent and she's lying to the side and on her left side is a cot. Okay. And then on the other side of that cot is a fucking gun. So not only is the gun on her left side, it's on the other side of a fucking cot. So it's like in between her body is a cot. And it's in no way in my mind looking at that sketch Does that gun fall where it does after someone shot themselves? Right. With their right hand. Because it's on their left side and it's a fucking, a whole cot away. How does it not land on the cot? How does, like, I, it, it, I'm really trying to piece it together. It doesn't doesn't add up. Because you could say, like, maybe she was sitting on the cot, but the cot would be disturbed. Like, it's perfectly lined up with the gun. It's weird. I mean, look at the fucking splatter, man. It's all on the right. Yeah. Everything is on the right. Why is the gun on the left? Right. I was going to point that out, too. And no, I fucking lied. She has both of her fucking shoes on. So how how would she have fucking... How would she have been able to shoot herself with her fucking shoe on? If you did a ballistics test and saw that a girl who's 5'2 can't even fucking put a fucking she had to use her toe so you're telling me a girl who's five one an inch shorter with both of her shoes on used her toe do you take me for a fool do you take me for a fucking idiot because that i am not and i'm just like i found my new passion in life and it is protecting these fucking women because oh my god i'm shocked i am shocked i am like it, why is it taking vanessa to like Hashtag I am Vanessa Guillen. It's devastating, man. Like, it, the army, the military, everyone had so many chances, and we just fucking let these people. We really fail down. a lot of people. We really did. I'm just, like, I can't say I'm sorry enough. It's what the fuck. So, two, wit- I, two witnesses that had actually found her body would talk about how they had heard two distinct explosions at the time of her death and when they went inside and found her they found two separate fires next to her body which again just like she that's not something that someone by themselves I mean maybe but just the way it sounds like it's another odd fact. You can only have so many odd facts in a case before it's yeah, fucking just... Yeah, someone's just... clearly trying to destroy evidence here. Yeah, I, I just... I can't. I, I. How has this case not been reopened? How have these people not been charged? It needs to happen, and I'm going to give an update on this because it's just... I. 
I will put it on my gravestone. <laughs> I don't know. It's just so fucking upsetting, man. So countless attempts and peti- petitions have been made in an attempt to get the case opened up again and investigated in some way. They would even go to Ike Skelton, who is a former United States representative of Missouri. And though he promised he would help as much as he could with the case, he really didn't do much of anything. And rightfully, when they were like, fuck this guy, he didn't do anything, it kind of just like made Ike mad. And he was like, fuck you. And then I'm really going to make sure that no one's able to help you. And it just kind of like made their journey harder. So, on July 19th of 2011, the criminal justice students in the Cold Case Investigative Research Institute, or the CCRI, which is run by three universities as a student club, wow. was select had selected Lavina's case for their investigation. And though they typically only spend a year on a case, they decided to spend three years on hers. Wow. Uh, but they were not able to give the Army anything to like go and relook at and they basically said like there's nothing <laughs> that says it was a suicide which I'm just like but did but did you try hard like did you, but did you actually like remake the scene yeah. did you like but the shoes I'm just like <sighs> The army how much should the army pay you i'll pay you double <laughs> just like i'll give you an iou i'm just like uh, just i don't know and okay. i i really wish that there was like a petition that i could send us to i really wish that there was something that i could link to voice our anger um i know that there's a facebook page for her um there is also a website dedicated to her that I can link, but it's really going to take people like saying, hey, what the fuck is up? Reopen this case to make it a deal. Uh, but until then, which it's going to happen, like I'm counting on it. It's just until then, that's really like the end of this tale for now. Yeah. I really, I always want to end on a good note about the victim and thankfully thanks to john johnson and linda johnson they did a really good job of preserving her and giving her a lot of information about her early life so thank you john and linda for allowing me to read that so um la vina lynn johnson was an immaculate human being and one of course that should never be forgotten She is a woman who, from a young age, showed great exception. She was even winning Baby of the Year Mm -hmm. at Walnut Park Church when she was just four months old. So, born a winner. She had, she was very passionate in her choir and showed a spirit that was born to lead, saying that when she was old enough, she would be in charge of waking up the family, making sure that everyone was up early enough on time to, like, get ready and make sure that everyone was ready for Sunday school. She also adored her role as a big sister to her little sister, Lakeisha, and she had also learned to play the violin and was on a roll student as soon as she joined school. In high school, she was known for being a dependable and friendly girl, and one that everyone can count on, and it was there that she set three major goals for herself in life. The first one was to attend attend college and major in performing arts in order to become a movie producer. Her father has actually written several, several fiction novels, and her goal was to one day see to it that her his books were made into movies, and she had even talked about being behind the camera in order to make that happen. Her second goal was to form a family music and movie company to showcase the whole talents of the family to the entire world. Her oldest brother, John, had actually written over 30 songs, and her other brother, uh, Jermaine, was attempting to form a music company at the time. And the third was that Lavina wanted to make a difference in the world. She had actually started by participating in a number of community activities before she died. So she was involved in feeding the hungry with a number of the church holidays, like the Feed the Needy programs. Mm-hmm. 
She would run or walk for cancer research. She collected canned goods for the homeless and the Boy Scouts. She would contribute to the environment. She would recycle paper and plastics. She donated clothing and money. And she also donated blood to Red Cross. Now, she graduated in May of 2004 as an honor roll student from Hazelwood Senior High School and enlisted in the Army rather than college. And after her tragic death in the 129th Corps Support Battalion, deployed to... Oh, sorry. Corps. 129th Corps Support Battalion deployed to Balad, Iraq, Lavina Johnson received a number of military honors, which were the Iraq Liberation Medal, the 82nd Airborne Special Citation, the Army Good Conduct Medal, the Army Commendation Medal, the Posthumous Certificate of Promotion to PC- PFC, the Purple Fallen Comrade Medal, and the honored at and she was honored at the Memorial Wall of Dead Hero Soldiers in Alexandria and in Alexander, Virginia. Now she also, on top of that, received honors from her community, which included the awarded special congressional recognition resolution for community service, which was given uh, by Congressman Lacey Clay on July twenty seventh of two thousand and five. She got the acknowledgement by the sixty first district naming july 27th as lavina lynn johnson day Mm. she was awarded the missouri house of representative resolution for community services adopted july 28th of 2005 and given the missouri house of representatives courtesy revolution adopted february 24th of 2008 and lastly she is survived by her father whom she admired john h johnson phd her mother linda g D. Johnson, whom she confided in because they were lovingly close. Aww. Her brother, John, whom she looked up to and whom she admired her. Her brother, J. Vince, whom she respected because of his calm mannerism. Her brother, Jermaine, whose fire and fight she liked. And her baby sister, Lakeisha, because of their closeness and her ability to be resourceful. Aww. And that is the tragic case and the horrendous and poorly done cover-up by the Army military of Lavina Lynn Johnson. Well, thank you for ruining my day. (sighs) Sorry, I'm out of breath. I, like, no one, my funeral is going to be two seconds because they're going to say, Kristen lived. That is all. Oh, my goodness. I'm just, like, such a fucking... A bright light, such... She had so much, so many things going for her. She was such a fucking valid human... I can't even say the right words. She deserved a future. She deserved every... Yeah. It's just to hear her story, to hear... How poorly... I mean, just like... The details of this case really shock me. I know. I really am left kind of speechless because I I could rant, but then I'm just like, uh, like, just do better people. I know. It's it's kind of hard to rant because it's just like how, what, what can a rant do for this? Because it's just so heartbreaking to think that Vanessa was going through it in 2020. Like, who knows the women that are continuing to go through it now? It's just like... I'm hoping that with the laws that are put in place, thankfully, because of Vanessa's case, that this will change. But the justice that still needs to be served for the victims of the past is still such a great, like, it's such a great need and it needs to be done. Lavina needs her, yeah, her murderers need to be brought to justice. And like John says, he won't sleep until, or like, he won't stop until that justice is served. And I wholeheartedly agree like this is an update that needs to happen and it's just how can we let these people who willingly sign up to give up their freedom to give up their like basic rights to help us out their lives and we do that to them it's ridiculous I mean wow 
Fuck. Now you understand why I needed a white claw. Yeah. <laughs> because. Uh, oh, shit, dude. Don't come for me in the comments, man. Those feelings were real and I'm allowed to feel them. Yeah. <laughs> just, it was just such a hard case to read. And oh my God. I, I'm sorry if I did not do it the justice that it properly deserved. But oh my God, just reading this, I, I just like my heart broke in a thousand pieces. And there was no way that I couldn't not say this, no matter how hard it was for me to say. Right. Uh, Ugh. Well, thank you. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Just as a woman, man, that, that. <sighs> well, mm. cheers to, cheers to Lavina on this one, man. She's a strong soul. I hope, I hope you have found peace. Man, I'll cheers to her family, cause yeah. Fuck. Yeah, ma'am. This one's this one's a little awkward. It's a little weird to end on because yeah. now I feel like I'm not the only one in the weird. It's just like uh, you know, this one. This one was a roughie. Like how yeah. do you even end that? I don't know because I just uh, want to go stand outside the White House and <laughs> <laughs> protest right now. Like I, I literally don't know what to do. It's just you're closer that. to Fort Hood. Go uh, protest there. Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> If you catch so me quick. on, if you catch me on the Fort Hood Police website, mind <laughs> your business. <laughs> but yeah, man, it un, like one thing that John said. This is the only time I'll get fucking political on this show because you know me, I don't know shit about politics. But it starts with the Congress people. Of as you <laughs> me obviously not knowing shit about politics, it starts with your congressmen and women, the congress people. You know, um, one of the the reasons that they had such a hard time getting this case is because the congress people weren't for them, and if they didn't have Lacey Clay on their side, then it would have been that much harder for them. So, if you are going to vote for congress people, make sure that they are not assholes. And they will support fucking people not getting raped in the military. Because holy guacamole, I didn't know that so many people were apparently against uh, giving justice to those people. Right. Did I sound political? <laughs> was no. that good enough? Yeah, that was, oh, I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah? No, I get it. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> I, uh, okay, mm. well, follow us. <laughs> it's not, I don't even want to do it this time. Uh, Just follow us. You know what to do. Until next time, guys. I don't fucking know. Don't be as depressed as yeah. us. Drink a white claw. Sarah, maybe make me laugh a little bit. That's all I ask. I'll try. Just get a little too drunk. Yeah. Maybe I'll try and cheer us up next episode with something lighthearted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>